while a lot of folks have it in their heads that the only place to get a beer is at a brew pub, don't give up on traditional mass-produced beer you can find at the corner store. Even experts swear by an ice-cold Miller, Bud, or PBR every now and again, so we're checking out the virtues of cheap beer. Craft beer may be where you go for complex flavor, but experts say our best-loved brews are still the ones that are humble and homegrown. The most consumed beer in the United States is still domestic, largely produced beers. Sometimes it's fun to just crack open an ice-cold Budweiser or Corona or Miller High Life. Julian Wright, owner of Petal House Brewery in Phoenix, Arizona, says cheaper beers that are brewed in mass quantities have a lot going for them, starting with consistency. They have the most technologically advanced brewing equipment. They've got really uh, talented brewers, and they're certainly able to brew mass quantities of beer very consistently. Everything from the color, aroma, and taste is tightly controlled in the big brew houses like Budweiser and Coors. The analogy is a little bit like McDonald's. You know, you can get the same Big Mac in St. Louis as you can in, in Maryland. But that consistent flavor can go south faster in a cheaper beer. Micro -brew craft beers will still taste palatable as they warm up. Okay, yeah. But a lot of domestic beers, mass-produced beers, will start to taste a little funky as they warm up. Yes. Our next virtuous fact about cheap beer is that it's usually lower in alcohol and carbs. A win-win for staying alert and watching your waistline. These come in around 4.2% and even a, a Bud Heavy is probably only 5%-ish. Okay. Your typical IPA is probably seven, so those will get you on the dance floor a little quicker than <laughs> a Coors Light, especially at Mick Ultra or even a Corona. And cheap beer doesn't have to be boring. This is where less expensive regional brands and Mexican beers shine, and everyone has a local favorite. I can only speak for Pennsylvania where I grew up, and Yingling, which is slowly marching west, uh, yeah. was a massively popular beer, that and uh, good old Rolling Rock. I'm from the Detroit area, and it was all about the Strohs, with yeah. the liner in the can, yeah. supposedly tasted better, you got less of that tinny taste. A lot of people's introduction to Mexican beer right here. That's the number one beer that most people were introduced to. Well, I tell you, on a hot day after you're done mowing the lawn, Corona with a lime, nothing lands like a Corona with a yeah, lime. Yeah, absolutely. Celebrating suds on a budget. I'm gonna give it a solid, not terrible. <laughs> All right. We're toasting the virtues of cheap beer.